Another night that the Lord, another day that the Lord has made. Shall rejoice and be glad in it. Thank God for a new beginning to be in present with us on tonight. And uh, thank God for you that are on Zoom and Facebook Live. And those that will view it on, on YouTube. We have a uh, we have a good lesson tonight for the body of Christ. We we're in the book of Peter tonight, First Peter, and we're going to deal. We we were we was in the book of James last week in uh, last lesson, and James was writing to uh, the twelve tribes that were scattered. We in the we in First Peter tonight, and First uh, Peter one and one says Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. Verse two says, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Tonight, once again, uh, like I say, Peter is writing to the strangers that scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, uh, Galatia Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. So he is writing he is writing to individuals. And so as members of the body, as individual members of the body, we're going, we're going to try to encourage you tonight, just as Peter was trying to encourage them. First thing he first thing we must grasp and understand that as it pertains to this life, uh, we are strangers. We have to have that understanding that we are strangers and we are pilgrimaging through. This is not our destination. This is not the place that we will live or dwell forever. So we have to understand that we're strangers in this land and we're pilgrimaging through here. And so tonight, uh, that's not what we're dealing with tonight, but tonight I just wanted to give you that foundation so we can understand uh, what we're dealing with. Tonight, we're trying to uh, encourage, encourage individuals. We're trying to encourage you as, just as Peter is trying to encourage them that scatter. So we're trying to encourage the members of the body of Christ tonight. And uh, so we're gonna pray real fast and then we're gonna get in, into the lesson. It's a good lesson. And I think it's right on time. Uh, you know, the the, uh, the Lord is getting us ready for his return because we know that the Lord is soon to come. So we're going to pray and without it, be gracious to heavenly Father, in the precious name of Jesus, we come tonight just thanking you once again for your tender mercy and your kindness. We thank you, Lord God, for uh, traveling grace to bring us safely over the highways, Lord, and to enter into your presence. You said where two or three would gather together in your name that you would be in the midst. So we give honor to the spirit of Christ tonight being in our midst. We pray that you would uh, open up our understanding, that you would lead and guide us, Lord God, according to thy word. And we just thank you tonight. We pray you would glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, uh, our, our lesson is coming from 1 Peter, 4th chapter, Verses 12 through 14. It's on your worksheet. So if you so if you don't have your Bible, it's on your worksheet. I'm just joshing. 
It's on your worksheet. First Peter, uh, fourth chapter. Uh, First Peter, fourth chapter, verses twelve through fourteen. And I'll be reading King James Version only tonight. It says, "Beloved," verse twelve says, "Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trials which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you." Thirteen. But rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering, that when his glory, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. Verse, uh, verse 14 is our focus verse tonight. Let's note that. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. For the spirit of glory and of God rested upon you. On their part, he is evil spoken of, but on your part, he is glorified. So tonight, <laughs> tonight, I, I, I just want to encourage us tonight to understand uh, how to glorify God. Or to understand uh or to understand when the glory of God is resting upon you. Verse 14 is our focus verse. Now, now understand it. He, he's talking to strangers that scatter. So he's trying to keep them encouraged, just, just like we're trying to keep the members of the body encouraged. Verse 14 said, if you be reproached for the name of Christ, and that word reproach, as it pertains to this lesson tonight, is to taunt or insult, or if you be insulted, is to rail at, to chide, to scorn, disgrace, rebuke, reprove, uh, reprimand. It says, so understand, if as, as a member of the body of Christ, as a born-again believer, if you are uh, suffering or enduring, enduring these reproaches for the name of Christ, he said, happy are you. He said, blessed are you. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, he said, for the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. That's what we want to draw attention to. That's where we want to draw attention to. Because when we are reproached, when we are uh, suffering or enduring insult and uh, taunt, taunting, and when we're being insulted, and we, we'll go, we're, going, we're going to get a little deeper as we go into the lesson, but we just want to lay the foundation. The understanding is when we are experiencing these things for the name of Christ, the, glory, the spirit of the glory of God is resting upon us. Now, what we want to avoid is the, oh God, why me? This is what we're trying to give understanding to. Because most of the time when, uh, when most of the time when we suffer uh, insult or uh, persecution or whatever, our most of the time our first response is, oh Lord, why am I going through this? Why me? We have to understand that is the wrong spirit. That is not the spirit of glory and of God. That's the wrong spirit. I'm going to read the scripture again. Here and here, read it with understanding. It said, if ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye, blessed are ye. It says, for the spirit of glory and of God rested upon you. On their part, he's evil spoken of, or he's blasphemed. It says, but on your part, he is glorified. <laughs> God is getting glory out of your life when you and I are enduring reproach, hardship, insult, trouble. The spirit of the glory of God is resting upon us. And for those that are causing the problem, those that are causing the insult, 
He said, it's, he, the Lord is evil spoken of on their part, or, or, or he's blasphemed on their part, because they don't understand how and why, you know, you and I will suffer or endure these things without retaliation or without giving up or without quitting or without breaking down or without going off. Mm -hmm. So they speak. So you are taunted, you are reproached. So they speak bad about God because you and I maintain our faith and our confidence in God. This is what we're dealing with. This is the encouragement tonight for for the strangers that are scattered throughout. This is the encouragement tonight for the members of the body of Christ who are who, who are just pilgrimaging through until the Lord's return. Scripture lets us know that when we are reproached for the name of Christ or for the sake of Christ, it says blessed are. It says for the spirit of glory. In other words, the spirit of the glory of God is, is resting upon us. And God is being glorified when we're going through. So, we're going to get into the lesson now that we didn't lay the foundation. So the understanding is this. We've got to, we've got to change that old, oh, oh, woe is me attitude and understand that when I'm going through for Christ's sake, say, and I'm not retaliating and I'm not getting revenge, then God is getting glory out of my endurance, out of my suffering, out of my reproach. He's getting glory. And if you know, like I know, uh, the scriptures say that he has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light that we should show forth the praises of him. So uh, we owe him, those of us that have been redeemed, we owe him the glory. We owe him the glory. And I know a lot of us only uh, equate the glory to shouting, singing, and dancing, and praying. All that stuff is good and it's fine. But when you and I are living our lives and we're going through reproach and hardship, then it's time to give him praise and glory in that aspect too. It ain't time to sing and dance <laughs> unless, unless you need to sing and dance to make it through. Matthew, fifth chapter, we on the worksheet. I think we're going to stay on the worksheet and run out. I tried to put all the scriptures on the worksheet tonight. That's why it looked so small. So we can try to stay on the worksheet. So I can, at least I can try to stay on the worksheet and run out. We're going to go to Matthew, the fifth chapter, verse 11 and 12. Understanding our thought tonight, the spirit of glory and of God rest upon you. Uh, Matthew, the fifth chapter, the 11th verse says, Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Verse 12, rejoice and be exceeding glad for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Jesus is, uh, you know, he's teaching He's teaching on the mount, Mount of Olives. He's teaching over uh, either before the Beatitudes are in, are included in the Beatitudes. But anyway, he's teaching on the mount, and he's letting you. He's letting the disciples know that blessed are you uh, when men revile you, persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. He said, he said, we're blessed. <laughs> he said, we're blessed when this, when we are experiencing this. You probably say, well, how in the world are we blessed when we've been uh, persecuted and this and that? One thing you have to understand is that God's ways are not our ways. God's thoughts are not our thoughts. The Bible said when he looked down and he saw his son being crushed and being bruised, 
he was pleased with that because he he offered up he offered up his his life his his soul he sacrificed his life. You have to say if you try to save your life, if you try to preserve your life, he said you're gonna lose it. He said, but if you lose it for my sake and the sake of the gospel, then you'll gain it. Here, this is what he's telling you. He said, when now you have to understand, we're dealing with people that scattered throughout. We're dealing with members of the body of the church with the understanding that we're just pilgrimaging through here. We're just going through here. So people persecute you. People speak all manner of evil because of your faith and your belief in Jesus Christ. He said, you're blessed when this is happening. Mm -hmm. He said, matter of fact, the 12th verse, he said, go ahead and rejoice. Be exceeding glad. He said, for great is your reward in heaven. Great is your reward in heaven. The scripture said, if we suffer with him, we'll be glorified together. I know we've got a lot of false teachers that tell you to go live high on the mountain. But if they, but what is what is the child of God if you don't suffer for Christ? Remember, you remember when the disciples was on the mountaintop? And they said, Oh, it's 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 great that we are here. Remember that Jesus is transfiguration. When Jesus was on the mountain and he transfigured into uh, Moses, Elijah, and uh, himself. And they were on the mountaintop and the disciples said, it's, it's, it's great that we're here. It's good that we're here. He said, you want us to go build you three tabernacles? <laughs> uh, three tabernacles? No. Moses represented the law. Elijah represented the prophets. Mm -hmm. and, and Jesus represented grace and truth. Mm -hmm. And so when this, the scripture, when the when the smoke cleared and everything was back to normal, the scripture says there was nobody there but Jesus alone. And then they left that mountaintop. They was on they was on a mountaintop. Oh, and they wanted to do great work. You want us to go build three tabernacles. They wanted to go do great work. But Jesus said, no, he left that mountaintop and went right back down into the valley. This is where you work at. <laughs> down here suffering reproach. Down here suffering persecution. Down here suffering ridicule. This is where you work at. Come on down. Come on. Come on off the mountain trying to build something. That's not where it's at. It's down here suffering for the, for the sake of Christ. It's down here going through it. Understanding that we are just pilgrimaging through here. We're not trying to build no kingdoms here on earth. We're just passing through. The church has lost its perspective, has lost its, its purpose. We are, he, we are being redeemed. We are, we are being called out. We're called out of the world. We're being redeemed because the Lord is coming back to gather his bride together. Let me keep running. Luke. Luke, the sixth chapter and the 22nd verse. It says, blessed are ye when men shall hate you and when they shall separate you from their company and shall reproach you and cast out your name as evil for the son of man's sake. Woo! I know that's hard for some people. <laughs> that's hard. That's hard for some people to be uh, they say when they cast you out of their company, because some of us, you know, some people want to be the life of the party. Some of us want to be the life of the party. But he said, look, he said, blessed are you. He said, happy, blessed are you when men shall hate you and when they shall separate you from their company and shall reproach you and cast out your name as evil for the son of man's sake. They're doing all this because of the sake of Christ, mm -hmm. because of our confidence, because of our faith in Christ. In other words, let me say it like this so we understand. Because of our faith in Christ, our confidence in Christ, we, we mess up other people's high when we're around. <laughs> <laughs> I know you can understand it that way. You, you, you 
mess up their hide when you're around. So they cast you out their company. You have to understand what the spirit is saying. And he's only and he is only sharing this with you and I because what he wants you to understand is that the glory of God is rested on you. It's not you, it's not I. It's the glory of God is what is what you represent. It's what we represent. It's what we stand for. It's, the, it's God's glory that's over you. God's glory is not over you because you got a Cadillac. That's, those are false teachers. Stop listening to that to false doctrine. God's glory is not over you because you live in a, in a condominium. No, that, that's false. That's, that's false doctrine. God's glory is over you when you are suffering reproach, when you're going through hardship and you didn't do nothing. God's glory is on you then. Ah, he said you're blessed. He said because your reward in heaven is great. Let, go ahead and let him talk about you. You don't you, go ahead and let them talk about you. You don't always have to try to fix what they're talking about. Just let them. Here we said they're gonna cast your name out as evil. We just read that. They're gonna cast your name out as evil. They're gonna separate you from their company. You don't always have to try and go fix every lie that somebody tell on you. You ain't got to try to go fix it. Let it go. They only fixing it because the glory of, they only lying because the glory of God is resting on you. Understand, under, understand how you and I glorify God. We don't, we don't glorify God because we got a private jet. That Acts 5, Acts 5, uh, verse 40 through 42. Verse 40 says, and to him they agreed. And when they had called the apostles and beaten them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. Verse 41. And they departed from the presence of the council rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name, 42. And daily in the temple and in every house, they ceased not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. The spirit of glory, the glory of God rests upon you. Listen to, listen to the text. He said, and to him they agreed. And when they had called the apostles and beat them, they had called the apostles together the council did, and beat them, and threatened them, and told them not to preach Jesus. Not to preach Jesus. They beat them. And then they let them go. The scripture said, then they let them go. And look at verse 41. It said, and they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. They didn't say, oh, woe is me. Look at what they did to me. No. They were rejoicing in the fact that they were worth, they were, that the Lord counted them worthy to suffer shame for his name. They didn't try to fight back, beat them back. You got to understand, you, if you want to know how to glorify God in your life, this is how to glorify God. He said, you should know the truth, and it's the truth that shall make you free. Verse 32, I'm, I'm sorry, verse 42 says, and daily in the temple and in every house, they cease not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. Even when you under persecution and you're under reproach, as the call of God, you've got to stand and you've got to preach and teach Christ. That's why the scripture says, if you try to save your life, if you try to preserve it, you're going to lose it. He said, if you if you ashamed to own me uh, before men, I'm gonna be he said, I'm gonna be ashamed to own you before my father. We're talking about the glory. We're talking about how, how the glory of God rests upon us. And when the glory of God rests upon us, it rests upon us when we are going through for Jesus' sake. Not because we're on a mountaintop and we can build something. No, that's not. 
That's not God's. That's not God's glory. That's your glory. That's not God's glory. All right, let me keep running. Second Corinthians, twelfth chapter, verse nine and ten on the worksheet. Very, very familiar passage of scripture. Verse nine says, "And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness." Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Verse 10. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Woo! Ha! <laughs> ha! Uh, uh, a humble spirit, a lowly spirit is a strong spirit. A humble spirit is strong. Not one that retaliates, not one that gets revenge, not one that acts unseemly. He said, one, he, said I, he said, I would rather glory. He said, I would rather glory uh, in my infirmities. I would rather glory in my in my weakness. I would rather glory in my weakness. I would rather admit and acknowledge my weakness so that the power of Christ would rest upon me, that the glory of God would rest upon me. He said, for when I am weak, then I'm strong. Verse 10 said, therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecution, in distresses for Christ's sake. He said, go ahead, in other words, go ahead and talk about me. Go ahead and separate your company from me. I'll, I'll endure these things. I'll suffer these things because I, that just confirms in me that the glory of God is on me. <laughs> Woo. You remember, you remember when, when the Lord hid Moses, when the Lord, when Moses wanted to see the glory of the Lord, he wanted to see the Lord's face. And the Lord told Moses, no man had looked upon me and lived, he can't look upon me. So the Lord took Moses and hid him in the cleft of the rock. And then the Lord passed by, and as the Lord passed by, he covered Moses' face with his hand. And passed by. And so Moses was able to see his hinder parts as he went by, which which left Moses, which left, which God's glory was so radiant that Moses had to cover his face. When he was in the midst of the children of Israel, they couldn't look upon his face because the glory of God. Because the glory of God was on him. He had, to, he had to put a veil over his face. He couldn't cover it. Now, the scripture says, if that which is done away was glorious, how much more glorious if that is that which abided forever? Got to hear what the Spirit is saying. You want the glory of God to, to rest upon you. Then you've got to go through some stuff. You've got to go through some reproach because you're only the uh, Paul. Paul told Timothy, "It's it's a good soldier that endures hardness for the Lord Jesus Christ." Uh, understand from the beginning that word glory. That word glory, as it pertains to this lesson, is honor, magnificent. Grandeur, majesty, uh, purification. All of these things, when, this, when, when the, the, the scripture said the spirit of glory and of God rest upon you, the spirit of uh, honor, the spirit of magnificence, the spirit of grandeur, the spirit of majesty, the spirit of purification, all of these things, are attributes of God. 
And when you and I are suffering reproach for Christ's sake, then the glory of God is shining us, shining on us in, in such manner. Mm -hmm. There's no other way to get God's glory. Right. You can't buy God's glory. This is why we have to, uh, this is why the ministry has to, this is why Paul and the rest of the apostles they had to suffer uh, being beat and whipped because they had to uh, stand for the truth of the gospel. That is the only way you and I have salvation. We don't have salvation with these false prophets and false teachers. They're lying prophets and they're false teachers. He said on, now verse 12, we read verse 12 in 1 Peter. And he said, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trials which are to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. Your, your test and your trials, they are, they are fiery, they are hard. That is not a strange thing with God. The objective for you and I is to, the Lord is trying to get us to understand we have to get rid of that uh, why me, what was me spirit. And understand that the glory of God is on you when you are going through fiery trials. We just read what the glory means, the, 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 the purification of God. Some, some, some trials are purifying you. <laughs> the Bible said, uh, <laughs> That being tried in the fire, that that's more precious. Your faith is, that's more precious to the Lord. Our faith being, being purified by the fire. Uh, you got to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. If you, wanna, if you want to glorify God, if you want God to get the glory out of your life, then you have to understand. I hate to keep talking about Job. But Job is an awesome book. We all we're all familiar with the story of Job. And uh, you remember Job's friend. You remember all that Job went to. And then Job's friend. <laughs> then you remember Job's friend. Right. But then the Lord finally spoke up at the end of all that, and the Lord was upset with them. The Lord was upset, and I and I didn't write it down. And I don't want to quote the wrong scripture, but I think it's somewhere like 42 and 6, 42 and 7, Job 42 and 7, or 42 and 13 and something. If you don't mind, try that and see. Because after, we all know what Job went through. And, uh, and his friends tried to tell him, he must have did wrong, he must have did this. And they tried to halfway counsel him and so forth and on and all that good stuff. But the Lord was upset with them because they didn't, they wasn't speaking truth about the Lord. They, they were suggesting that Job did something wrong and that he was in sin, the reason that he went through all that stuff. No. Job was just suffering reproach. He was suffering persecution. If you remember the story, the, uh, huh? Oh, when the Lord blessed him? No, no. If you remember, I, I, if you remember, the Lord and, and Satan had the conversation. And the Lord told Satan, okay, you can go ahead and touch him. But don't take his life. Bah, 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 bah. It wasn't that he sinned. Is that he he was under persecution? He was suffering reproach. This is why the Lord was upset because the glory of the Lord was on Job, and all they could think about was, "Oh, you must have did wrong." You blah 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 blah. It's it's the part where the Lord responded to his friends and said they were not speaking truthful about it in their counsel and in their or whatever. Uh, but like I said,
like I said, I didn't have it written down, so I, we're not gonna worry about it. But it, it's uh, it's like maybe 42, 6, 42, 7. But uh, huh? Seven says, and it was so that after the Lord had spoken these words unto Job, the Lord said to Eliphaz the Temanite, My wrath is kindled against thee and against thy two friends, for ye have not spoken of me the thing that is right as my servant Job had. Right, that right there. That's what I was talking about. He was upset with them because they hadn't. I, all that talking they was doing, and Job, you must have did it. They ain't said nothing that was right about it. Because they didn't understand, they didn't understand that Job was caught up in a divine. The Lord considered Job to the enemy. So the point, the point I'm trying to say is that I think it's not strange when you're going through fiery trials <laughs> as though a strange thing has happened. It has not happened. You and I, uh, you and I must suffer reproach. We must suffer persecution. We must endure it. Okay, uh, let's run. First uh, Timothy four and ten. First Timothy four and ten says, "For therefore, we both labor and suffer reproach." Because we trust in the living God, who is the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach, because we trust in the living God, who is the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. If you want, if you want the glory of God to rest upon you, you're going to have to endure when they reproach, you're going to have to endure. When they persecute you, you're going to have to go through it. <laughs> if you want the glory of God, you can't, can't retaliate, can't render evil for evil. He's, uh, let me keep running because my time. Hebrews 10, 33 through 35. We're on the worksheet. We don't have to really get off. 33 says, partly while as ye were made a gazing stop, both by reproaches and afflictions, and partly while it ye became companions of them that were so used, 34, for ye had compassion of me in my bond, and took joyfully the spoiling of your goods, knowing in yourself that ye have in heaven a better and an enduring substance, 35. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. Scripture say, they that endure to the end shall be saved. We have to, we have to cast not away our confidence. You have to hold fast to your confidence. It's the enemy that coming to steal, kill, and to destroy. Jesus said, I come that you would have life. And if you and I would go through uh, our reproaches, if we would go through our test and trials, and if we would bear our infirmities, and if we would do these things, he said, bless God, because the glory of God is resting upon us. Ah. Uh, let me run. Hebrews 13, 11 through 14. It said, check this one out. Take note to this one. <laughs> Hebrews 11, I'm sorry, Hebrews 13, 11 through 14. It said, for the bodies of those beasts whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin and burned without the camp. Wherefore, Jesus also that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gate. 13. Let us go forth, therefore, unto him without the camp, bearing his reproach. 14. For here 
have we no continuing city, but we seek one to come. Listen, he said, verse 11, said the body of those beasts whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin are burned without the camp. They burn the bodies outside the camp. They brought the blood in, sprinkled the blood through whatever their procedure was back then. They hear what the Spirit is saying. The bodies of the animals were burned outside the camp. Now check it, check this out. Verse 12 says, Wherefore Jesus also that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gate. <laughs> he suffered outside of the church. He suffered without the gate. He didn't suffer within the gate. He didn't jump around in the church, excited jumping around in the church, talking about, I'm glorifying God. No, he suffered outside the gate. Got to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. He suffered outside the gate. Verse 13 said, let us go forth, therefore unto him without the camp, bearing his reproach. We're talking about, <laughs> we've got to live this life. We've got to live it outside of the church. Going through some stuff. Sacrificing, going through, out you and I are sacrificed outside the church, outside the camp, outside the gate. He said, go forth. He said, and we are bearing his reproach. Oh, boy, that's, that's deep. That's so deep, that's too, too big for me. He said, even Jesus himself uh, suffered without the gate. In other words, he suffered in his ministry, he suffered uh, being persecuted. He suffered. He suffered with this fake trial that they made a fake trial and mocked him, crucified him. They did all this outside the, the gate, outside the gate, outside of outside. You don't glorify. You don't. You and I don't necessarily glorify God at our best inside the camp. It's a whole bunch of saved folks inside the church. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you got to go outside the camp. You got, to, <laughs> woo, you got to hear what the Spirit is saying. If you want the Spirit of the glory and of God to rest upon you, he said, "Go." He said, let us go forth. Look, look at the verse again. Verse 13, he said, let us go forth therefore unto him without the camp, bearing his reproach. Bearing his reproach. That way, that way by the time you get back to church on Sunday, all you got energy for is to worship. You ain't got time to be with no mess. Because you've been out there all week bearing reproach, <laughs> suffering persecution. You've been insulted. You've been lied on. Come on, somebody. By the time you get it back into the presence of the Lord on Sunday, you just want to work, you just want to worship. You ain't got time to be sitting around trying to uh mark it and uh, we have we have gathered to worship. All right, let me run. Last one, I'm gonna let you go. Or the last two, I'm gonna let you go. 1 Peter 2, 19 and 20. It said, 19 says, For this is thankworthy. If a man for conscience towards God endure grief, suffering wrongfully. Verse 20. For what glory is it if when ye be buffeted for your faults, ye shall take it patiently? But if when ye do well and suffer for it, ye take it patiently? This is acceptable with God. He said, what good is it when you have it coming and you take it patiently? He said, but when you don't have it coming 
and then and you don't have it coming and you take it patiently, you said this is acceptable to God. We're talking about the glory of God resting upon us. We're talking about the the, the spirit or the grandeur of God, the grace of God. We read where Paul besought the Lord three times to remove that thorn in the flesh. And the Lord said, I'm not going to do it. You have to understand my grace is sufficient. So, to the members of the body of Christ, Peter was writing to the strangers that were scattered throughout those areas, mm -hmm. trying to encourage them. As we are trying to encourage you tonight, when you are suffering reproach, and when you're going through hardship, he said, you're blessed, rejoice, because the glory of God is resting upon you. Mm -hmm. And in your weakness, and then you're almost about to give up, and then you're almost about to fight back. <laughs> ah! He said, you were made strong. You were made strong. So as it is always, we pray that you got something out of it tonight. But as it is always, the Lord is getting ready to come. It's soon to come. And, and we want to encourage you always to repent. Be baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of your sins. No sins going into heaven. There was a time when every man did what was right in his own eyes. Scripture said, but and God had winked, God winked at that. But now he's required every man everywhere to repent. So as it is always, we we, we encourage you to repent. Be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And let the Lord fill you with the Holy Ghost. Except the man is born again of the water and the spirit. He cannot enter into the kingdom of God. With bowed head, let us pray. Be gracious to Heavenly Father in the precious name of Jesus. We come tonight thanking you once again for the visitation of your spirit. We pray that you would open up our hearts and minds and our understanding of your word. Lord God, lead us and guide us with that truth. We know that that word is true. Take us from this place, but never from your presence. Bring us back again at the appointed time. Safety, Lord God, and we'll praise you and glorify you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.